Well, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us today for our last new knowledge of, of this, this year's series. So glad to have you join us. Um, if you're not familiar, this is your first time. This is a series that started in 2014 as a way to support the Washington County Business Challenge to continue the professional development of our challengers, but also to support our business community in Washington County. And now it's, it's, it's spread throughout uh, Virginia with folks joining us. My name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital, and I am pleased as punch to partner in this program with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator, and the town of Abington. Um, this, we think, is probably one of the longest running professional development series in Virginia. Um, when we've been doing this since 2014, and uh, we also have been recording this and, and video with it since 2015. So that's what we're doing today. We are recording the series, um, the session uh, for education and training purposes, and it will be available on the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com forward slash new knowledge where you're going to find probably 120 to 125 workshops that we've had over the past um, since we started this series and recording those. So that's a great resource if you're wanting to know how to set up QuickBooks to marketing to today video development. Um, you will you will learn that. We do have everyone muted for um, to help uh, move the the uh, session forward, but if you have a question for our presenter today, please post those in the Q&A section and we will address those at the end or maybe even during the, the, the session. Um, I'm so happy to have what I consider a good friend, Carrie Kennedy with Starscape Media to lead this session. Um, Carrie is no stranger to uh, video development and she's been a strong supporter of the programs that I do. Um, and she's a video producer uh, who founded Starscape Media, and it's a local video production company, and they've been in business since 27, uh, 2007. So she knows her stuff. Uh, please uh, give her some hard questions, and I want to see how she does on that. But uh, uh, Carrie, thanks for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Sandy, for that warm introduction. I already see a familiar face. I see Kathy Lowe. Kathy, you're one of the only folks I can see here on my screen right now, but it's good to see you on here today. It's and good to see you. And, uh, you know, Sandy failed to say an Emory and Henry grad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is, I, I, I asked Sandy not to go too deep on my intro because I didn't want to cut into uh, what little I have to share. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really hope that I'll have some really good things to share today. But I also told Sandy that I'm used to hiding behind a camera. This is all new to me being in front of the camera. So uh, I've given this particular talk a few times and, uh, but it's been a while. So uh, have, have a little grace for me today as I, as I muster the courage to come out from behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can uh, see, see my slides here. First, just wanna say a uh, warm welcome to everybody again. It's so nice to meet you all. As Sandy said, uh, I'm the founder and producer at Starscape Media. We're a video production company based in Bristol. So we've been here in the Tri-Cities since 2007, coming up on our 14th year. So uh, I love uh, video. I love creating video and uh, have a fairly long history with video. I started back in, um, Gosh, 1996, I think it was. Uh, I was just a young whippersnapper uh, at, in a high school video pr program. I went to school at Franklin County High School down below Roanoke, kind of between Roanoke and Martinsville. And the school uh, made a big investment when I was a teenager to start a video production program. And so it was really geared towards journalism and teaching students, you know, upcoming journalists uh, video production. But I had a excellent, excellent instructor who was actually from Lee County, a man by the name of Mark Early. And Mr. Early was dear to me, uh, just really took me under his wing and 
started teaching me a lot about video when I was just very young. And so uh, he would actually let me check out a camera from the program. And I was, you know, shooting everything I could think of. I was shooting family reunions. I was shooting um, weddings. I actually took a job working for a local cable access TV station. I would, of course, do the projects uh, that were part of his class. And, you know, so I was able to jump right in at a young age to video. And that uh, I'm definitely dating myself here because that was back in the days, the old analog days when video was actually uh, tape to tape. So uh, when we talked about editing video back in those days, we talked about transferring uh, clips from one actual physical analog VHS tape over to another one. And so, you know, needless to say, video production, video editing has come a long, long, long way since then. And, uh, and hopefully I have too. I look back at some of my early productions and, um, and it's a good laugh uh, just to see, you know, sometimes back, you go back to that video in the 90s and it was like so blurry that uh, I actually laughed. I had a good friend that her uh, son plays high school football now. And, you know, that today they've got the luxury of this high definition footage that is just crystal clear. And uh, his father, this young man's father had grown up playing football in the 90s and he had a few, you know, old tapes of his high school career. And uh, he tried to show them to his son and his son said, Dad, those are those are nice and all, but it's so blurry. I can hardly even tell which player you are on the screen. So uh, it's been fun, you know, to be involved with video through several decades and to see the evolution of the uh, medium, to see the evolution of the equipment that we have today. And, you know, now today we can just pull out our phones and you can actually edit a video on your phone. So definitely we've seen things come a long way. Uh, to continue telling you just a little bit about me and my background, hopefully that will help set the stage for some of the things that we'll be going over today. But uh, after college, or actually uh, after high school, I, uh, Mr. Early had such an influence on me in high school that I followed uh, him to his alma mater, which was Emory and Henry. He had grown up, I think I mentioned in Lee County, and he had gone to school at Emory and Henry. So I made the move from Roanoke to true Southwest Virginia and uh, came to the Emory area in 1998, graduated from uh, Emory and Henry with a degree in mass communications in 2002. I'm sure quite a few of you probably know uh, Dr. Teresa Keller, who was over that program, and she's very dear to me uh, as well as Mr. Early. She, the, I credit both of them for um, putting me on a great path and, and gearing me towards success at a young age. So I uh, went to school at Emory & Henry, graduated in 02. From there, I spent a couple of years working in news. I actually had started working in news when I was still in college uh, at WCYB. So I spent a couple of years as a news videographer there. From there, I moved to work for a Christian uh, television network and spent five years there. And that was a neat experience in video because I was able to learn everything from running a master control room, which is actually airing commercials and um, and that kind of thing, airing actual programs on the, from the master control suite to, you know, sitting behind a switcher and directing multiple cameras and live productions and produce productions, did a lot of video editing, did a lot of shooting back in those days. So it was a great experience and kind of launched me into starting my own business back in 2007. And that's when I started Starscape Media. So um, you know, people often ask me, you know, when I, when I tell them I do video production, they always, the go-to is, do you do weddings? And uh, I did uh, produce wedding videos for many years. I think I spent 16 years producing weddings. And then I'm happy to say that I retired. <laughs> Every once in a while, I still um, will, will produce a wedding video. But for the most part, I'm mainly focus on uh, helping small businesses, businesses large and small, really, and uh, nonprofits develop video for um, you know, for, for purposes that a small business or a nonprofit might have. And those purposes can be very varied. And we'll go over some of those today. But um, that's kind of a little bit about my background. To tell you a little bit about uh, Starscape Media, we really are a video production company solely. Um, we work with some marketing agencies and we, you know, we wear the marketing hat ourselves when it comes to video. And we also um, work with marketing agencies to develop, you know, cohesive plans that would include video and marketing. But our uh, bread and butter really is video production. So I've got a video I want to share with you. It's a actually a, um, it's a video that we developed recently just to kind of uh, spread and share what we do. Um, on our website, and we haven't released this. You're actually the first ones to preview this video, but we've been working on this little promotional video for Starscape, and I'd like to share it with you just to kind of give you a taste for um, 
kind of some of the video projects that we work on. Uh, those of you that are familiar or involved at Emory and Henry will see there are a couple of Emory and Henry videos that are uh, showcased in this particular promotion. So you might see a few familiar faces in this one, but um, I will roll this. <laughs> Yeah, that was just a short little promo to kind of splice a few little segments in to show you some of the work that we do. There you saw some animated videos. You saw some uh, what I would call a talking head video when it's kind of featuring a person that's standing in front of the camera, talking directly into the camera, um, some interview based videos, that kind of thing. And uh, I'll go over the types of video a little bit uh, further here in just a minute. But uh, first, just want to introduce the talk in general. Uh, when Sandy first reached out to me about a year ago, we were in the middle of quarantine and uh, I got her email and I was elated at the opportunity to be with you all today. And she asked me if I would do a talk on video. And, you know, at that point, I started thinking about what what might this talk entail. And um, a few years ago, I did a, a talk at the uh, it was an AAF group, Southwest Virginia AAF group, and I shared on video as a Swiss Army knife, as a marketer, a marketeer's Swiss Army knife. And uh, we talked a lot in that talk about the importance of video and how video was really on the rise. This was, you know, I first developed that talk about 10 years ago. And, you know, some of the stats are still relevant, but a lot of the stats that I had had included in that video have just skyrocketed since that point in time. And it went from video being, you know, kind of the number one content source for mar marketing to now being critical to marketing. And so when I was developing this talk, I told Sandy, I wanted to call it vital video because I think we've moved into the realm where video is no longer just a good idea. It's really critical um, to marketing efforts. And, you know, especially in the midst of the pandemic and what 2020 uh, first brought us. And now, you know, we're walking into 2021 and things are starting to regulate, normalize a little bit, but we're still all leaning so heavily on video. And um, so today I just want to talk about how vital video is, why it's vital, why you need it, and how you can make use of it. And I do want to encourage you all to really post your questions here because, you know, as I thought about the talk, there's so many videos is, is so broad and it can be used, utilized and used in so many different ways. And I really want this talk to be beneficial for you all. So, and I'm sure you've got questions and, you know, I'm hoping that what I'll cover today will cover some of the questions that you might have, but I'm sure there's going to be plenty of outline questions too. So please um, drop your questions in as we go. And I've already given Sandy full, um, encouragement to interrupt me as needed, you know, if the questions start piling up, because I'm actually not viewing the questions on my screen here. So I'll just have Sandy interrupt me if, if pertinent questions come along as I'm discussing certain topics. But, and we'll also, I'm hoping to get through this fairly quickly so that we'll have plenty of time at the end to just have discussion and, you know, can hopefully answer any questions you might have, or at least uh, get back to you on any questions you might have today that I can't answer in person. But, um, Without further ado, we'll just get right into this. So the topics for today are really why video, how you can utilize video, and what not to do when it comes to video. So I've included a few things that might help steer you away from, you know, maybe make, making some mistakes when it comes to video. And I always tell people a lot of what I've learned has come from years of experience and actually making mistakes. And I'm sure you all can relate to that. I feel like uh, sometimes we learn best by making mistakes and I've made plenty. So <laughs> I've got a lot to share about uh, what, what to do, what not to do when it comes to video or what are things that I've learned from. Um, but let's start with why video and the power of video and what's the big deal about video? Why is video uh, this content king? So uh, better to show than to tell in this case. So I just want to play this really quick short uh, video for you. I think it's just six seconds. So. We went on vacation with a toe dipper and left with a cannonballer. 
So it didn't end abruptly. That's literally how long that video is. And uh, you see there the branding in the corner. It's a video for Airbnb. And this was a social video that they released. And as I was putting this talk together, I thought, so short, you know, that is such a short message, but it left me personally with a lot. Um, it left me with a taste of being a kid again. It left me with uh, the experience of thinking, man, I really want to take a vacation. You know, it, it just evoked so much thought and emotion in such a six second video. And uh, I just thought that was such a good and telling representation of the power of video that you could literally have a, a short clip of six seconds. I think it features three or four different shots that have been edited together to tell a very succinct story, but yet it carries a huge message to me at least and leaves you thinking Airbnb. So to me, that is the power of video. And it's really the combination of sight and sound. It's really the most immersive experience that we have in this day and time. And when it comes to media, you know, you have plenty of content. We're living in a world that's so saturated with um, media, with words, with voices, with music, with, you know, so much. But video is a combination of sight and sound. You know, it's a combination at times you're going to read text with video. At times you're going to see moving pictures with video. And at the same time, you're going to have that, um, you know, not all videos have sound, but a lot of videos do. And when you combine um, all those different elements, you have a really, really powerful medium. And as I'm sure you all are all aware, we're living in such a media saturated society right now that I think video has risen to the top because it's the most attention grabbing um, medium that, that we have at our disposal. And I really can't help but wonder with excitement what we're going to see in our generation, you know, in generations to come when it comes to video and if it will get even more immersive. Um, I guess time will tell. We'll, we've seen, you know, three, the rise of 3D video kind of came in and fell off a little bit and had its um, shortcomings, but I'm sure there are a lot of ways that video will progress even in our lifetimes, maybe, you know, with virtual um, video and stuff moving into the into the realm of thought here in the near future. But video, um, just to give you a few stats about video, 83% of human learning occurs vis visually, and that's a Hewlett Packard stat. Um, but that's incredible to me, you know, 83% of human learning that occurs visually, and the brain processes video 60,000 times faster than text. I don't, I can't even process how that could happen. <laughs> I was not a math. Uh, I really uh, tried to pay really good attention in Mr. Early's class and in Dr. Keller's classes, and I didn't do so well with math. But 60,000 times, I, I can't even fathom how that's possible. But that just shows you the power of video and how video uh, is a, attention grabbing. And, and it's also, it comes down to retention. And uh, this Forbes stat tells us that viewers retain 95% of a message communicated via video compared to 10% when reading text. Again, another mind boggling stat that's honestly hard to, to believe, but you know, I'm just giving you a few stats here in, in my coming from my research, but you can do a quick Google search about the power of video or about video marketing, and you'll find article after article after article. Uh, lots and lots of research has been done that tells us that video is truly king when it comes to marketing content. And for very good reason, because of stats like this one that tell us that, uh, you know, 95% retention for a message communicated via video compared to, to just reading plain text. And so I kind of want to walk you through uh, a little example of that. Uh, here, I've said that video takes us places. And, you know, you can read here on the screen what I've got written. A waterfall is beautiful and powerful. And, you know, growing up, I love to read and my mind, I'm a very visual person, as you can imagine being a video person, but my mind would conjure, you know, you're reading and you start to conjure thoughts about what you're reading. So you might read this line and, and start to conjure thoughts of a beautiful waterfall. And you might think about how powerful a waterfall is. But for me, my mind really stops there. Then if you have the opportunity to actually see a video clip of a waterfall, All of a sudden, it's much more of an immersive experience. I wanted to let this clip play out in its full 
duration because I think the longer you watch it, the, the more immersive it becomes. But for me, you know, paying attention to this video clip, I started to see the breeze that was blowing through the trees. And not only did I see it, but I started to imagine what that breeze felt like. I didn't get that same experience reading words on the page about a waterfall. I could see a waterfall, but I didn't really start to feel the breeze for me personally until I saw the video clip. All of a sudden seeing the video clip and seeing that foggy, misty water rising from, uh, I guess this is Niagara Falls, but anyways, um, it, it, I started to even smell, you know, the water. I started to, you know, see the, the wind ripping through the hair of the people that were there in the boat watching the waterfall. And all of a sudden it's truly taking me to that place of, you know, being there on the edge of the boat, like they are in an immersive experience. And, um, that to me really illustrates the power of video is that combination of sight and sound. A couple more stats for you. 94% uh, of those surveyed say that they watch videos to learn more about a product and they're swayed to purchase that product 84% of the time. And that's a HubSpot, uh, that's coming from a HubSpot article that I read recently. But again, just staggering stats that tell us that, you know, from what I've read, people really seek out video. You know, there's plenty of video to just encounter when you're scrolling, let's say on Facebook or, you know, that kind of thing. But research is telling us that people actually will seek out videos. And I think we can probably say that we've all done it. You know, let's say you're looking to buy a product. Um, a lot of people will search for a video. They want to, they want to see, you know, that product in action. They want to hear about it. They want to hear about a demo. They want to, um, maybe watch a YouTube review of that product. Um, and I would love to hear your all's feedback on this too. You know, if that's something that you find yourselves doing, if you gravitate towards video uh, before maybe other mediums, but, you know, I, I read an article not so long ago about uh, executives and how, you know, busy executives a lot of times don't want to call through long articles and they don't have time, you know, to sometimes read all of their emails even, but if you, put a, a video in front of them, they'll almost always hit play and watch that video. So uh, pretty neat stats that just point to the power of video. And I'll leave you with just a couple more stats and then we'll move on. 87% um, of online marketers utilize video content. 93% of marketers surveyed say they've landed a new customer thanks to video on social media. And honestly, I've seen this in my own business. Um, honestly, we have been so slammed due uh, you know, business has been has been steady for me through the years, but uh, the pandemic took things to whole new levels. And so we have literally just been so slammed with people coming to us because they recognize the power of video because they're reliant on video in this day and age. And, um, you know, that has spoken volumes to me about um, the effectiveness of video. But even when I have put out, I don't do a lot of marketing, honestly, because we've been so busy um, in the last little bit. But if I do, you know, put out a video, I notice the traction that it gets. And it really has uh, helped me gain business personally as a small business owner myself. Uh, hey, Carrie, we got a question and you said I could interrupt you with questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Bob Mueller wants to know, could you share your thoughts on the best time length of a video, how to get your message out, but you don't want to lose the viewer, you, people like me with the short attention span? Yes, that's a great question. Um, more than ever, shorter is better. And, you know, there's an exception to every rule. And, you know, with, with video, um, I like, I like to liken video sometimes to construction work and they're so opposite in many ways. But, you know, if, if I get a, an email or a call from a potential client that wants to talk to me about video, I really have to start asking some questions and digging into what they want before I can really help them at all. Because I'll tell people a lot of times, if you just call me and say, hey, I want a video. If, if I was running a construction company and you called and said, hey, I want a house, I would have to start asking questions like, okay, do you want a little shed, you know, behind your house that will house gardening tools? Um, or do you want a mega mansion? You know, there's a lot of room in between. And it's the same with video. There's so many facets of video. There's so many um, ways you can use video. So this is kind of a tricky question for me to answer, but I will say that typically shorter is better. And there's going to be those times where a long video is appropriate and best. Um, maybe if you're doing a tutorial of a product that, you know, you want to step by step, take somebody through a very thorough process, you may want a 20 minute video, you may want a 60 minute video. 
Um, and, and they're for the right person that's looking for that con that type of content, they may actually sit down and eat up every second of that 60 minutes. Um, but on the flip side, uh, if you are just really trying to grab someone's attention, which actually leads perfectly into my next slide, um, the three main categories of video and those that I've broken down for you today are awareness, just getting on somebody's radar engagement, which is really intended to spark a reaction or, you know, prompt a call to action and education to teach someone something. So I think, you know, within any of those categories, you may have reason for a longer video at times, but in most cases, especially on the awareness and engagement front, you want to keep it short, sweet to the point, because most of us do have really short attention spans these days. And, uh, you know, it really depends too on if you have a captive audience or not. Like I tell folks, um, I did a produced a safety training video for a local um, manufacturer a few years ago. And uh, we tried to make that safety video as engaging and as fun and as, you know, even in, including some humor and some um, different aspects, we actually paralleled safety to, to sports because we were trying to appeal and reach a group of men that really like sports. And so we were trying to help them, uh, help them um, engage with the safety video on a, on a level that they would actually stay tuned to. But in that case, I told the, uh, the owner of that business, we kind of had a captive audience because these employees were forced to watch, you know, the video, they weren't going anywhere. They were going to be sitting in a room where they had no choice, but to watch this video. Same time, you still don't want to just bore people to death for the sake of, uh, of a video duration or a certain video length, but it's always best, I think, just to communicate what you need to communicate, move on. Um, when it comes to awareness and engagement, you know, think back to that Airbnb video, six seconds is all it took for them to make a very strong point that led you, left you with their logo and you knew, okay, hmm, Airbnb, maybe I'll check Airbnb later today and see if there are any vacation rentals that uh, have a swimming pool. <laughs> but um, it's probably not, you know, definitely not the most succinct answer, but I think shorter is going to be better in most cases. You know, years ago when I first started producing videos, we would regularly produce videos that were five minutes in length, say for a corporate overview video or a company overview. Anymore, I really encourage my clients that, you know, two minutes is a pretty long time. Um, you know, and, and sometimes it's better to have five two minute videos that you can break up and release at different times as opposed to having, you know, one five minute videos, one five minute video rather. Uh, recently mentioned that I was producing some work for Emory and Henry and we actually produced a video for Emory and Henry that we produced as a long form project. I think it was about four minutes long, but we actually produced it on the front end in such a way that it could be segmented into these clear chunks of smaller video content. So they had in the end, this four minute video that, you know, at times maybe when they had a captive audience and wanted to present all of the information that was in this particular video, it was geared towards a career services program that Emory and Henry uh, recently started. But we also produced it in such a way that it could easily be separated into these standalone videos. So they had those videos that they could share on social media, just little teases, you know, to talk about a particular segment of their program. So uh, I like that approach personally. I think it's pretty cool when you can uh, multitask and, you know, reach both audiences. When you have a captive audience, you maybe can go a little bit longer. And when you, uh, when you want to share something on social media, especially, I think it's important to keep things moving right along. Does that help? Any further questions on that topic? I'll just, Sandy, you feel free to interrupt at any time if you get any questions in, but. I'll do, no new questions at this time, ma'am. Okay, so let's move on to utilizing videos and the ways to utilize videos. This is really, you know, as I was putting this presentation together, this almost overwhelmed me because there's so many ways to use video. And, you know, at Starscape, we've we produce live event videos. We've produced, um, you know, short micro videos. A micro video would be an example of the Airbnb uh, example. That's an example of a micro video. It's just a short little clip that you might share on social media or um, put in an email or something like that. But 
the sky's the limit when it comes to video in general. You can produce company overview videos, which a lot of the videos that we're producing these days are for, for a company or a small business or a nonprofit that just wants a video that can tell their story, you know, in three minutes, two to three minutes, they want to just be able to encapsulate their story. Um, so that's what I would call a company overview video. Um, I've got a few little, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, um, how, how large that slide is on your end, but the Lab Connect, uh, Lab Connect is a company that recently relocated from Seattle to Johnson City, and we produced a company overview video for them last year, and we actually hired an actress to kind of play the host of that video, and so she um, invited the viewer in to learning more about the company, and then from there, we um, spliced in some segments with executives that talked about Lab Connect and what they do, so that was kind of a merger of some of the talking head type content with um, what I call B-roll, which would be actual footage of, of the company and what they do. So if you see in the top right corner, the sample just sticks um, graphic is overlaid over, you know, some footage of, of that company and what they do. So those are little thumbnail examples of a company overview video. You, we've all seen uh, inter plenty of interview based content. You can do lots with interview based content. You can weave those into something like a company overview video. You can do a standalone video that's literally just kind of a Q&A type style. And those are, you know, more easily produced by those that want to, you know, kind of keep video work in house and they may want to just um, you know, pr produce an interview that you can easily share online and get a great message out. Um, and I'm going to go over later in the presentation a few tips and do's and don'ts for uh, recording that kind of footage on your own. Um, another type of video would be product review and demonstration, as I think I mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, you've all seen those videos on YouTube where they just literally walk you through a step by step of a product review or demonstration. Those also are pretty, you know, doable on your own. Um, with the right tools and, and skill set. Um, behind the scenes videos, uh, I was reading some articles in preparation for this talk about the power of video and they were mentioning how everybody, we just innately as humans love when we get a sneak peek at something, you know? So behind the scenes videos are a great way to build um, a following. You know, one thing I wanna definitely say in this presentation is that, you know, it used to be years ago that we would get calls for a company that wanted a video and we would produce a video that was maybe a company overview or would kind of tell their story and they would put it on the main page of their website and, you know, they would email it out, use it in a presentation, et cetera. But that was kind of it. And then maybe, you know, uh, five or six years later, they'd call us back and want to freshen that video up or produce a new one of the same vein. Well, anymore, you know, we're still doing that type of work, but a lot of times today we're doing the social media content or we're doing these short little snippets because marketing directors today know that video is in high demand and you can't just produce a video once every five or six years and, and check the video box. You have to really keep the content fresh and you have to keep, you know, keep rolling it out to really build a, an audience that's engaged. So, you know, I think um, as you're thinking about how you can utilize video in your nonprofit or in your business, you know, I think it's great to start thinking about, you know, different different ways you can weave a lot of these different concepts in. And, you know, some you may take a more high-end uh, produced approach and some may be very, um, very budget friendly and very low end when it comes to a production uh, value. And one thing I'll add that I think 2020 has done for all of us is it's kind of lowered the bar when it comes to production values. And um, it, it is, you know, we've all become so accustomed to just, uh, doing the best we can given, given the circumstances, you know, like with zoom calls, just pulling out our laptops and getting on online and sharing a video that way. And, you know, taking clips with our phone, it's very, you know, people aren't, um, we're kind of inviting people into our homes and into our offices in that way. And, and I think that in and of itself is kind of a behind the scenes perspective that people really enjoy. Um, but the job security for me in that same realm is that there's a lot of that kind of content floating around the internet. So if you really want to gain viewers and you really want to, you know, for your video content to really pop and have the most effectiveness, you would do well to come up with a concept that's a little creative, you know, or a lot creative or to do something different than, than what everybody else is seeing, because that's really what's going to grab the attention of viewers is, you know, seeing something different, seeing something unusual, seeing something creative, um, and that doesn't mean you have to hire a production company to do that, but just thinking creatively and out of the box and mixing up um, the video that you release. 
you know, in whatever portal you may be releasing video. Uh, animated explainer videos, those are super popular and super effective. Uh, you see the, the little thumbnail on the slide of a family holding hands. And, um, you know, that's just a little thumbnail graphic. But of course, that's an animated video that, you know, combines text and it combines motion graphics and, you know, tells a story. And this particular one was produced for um, a nonprofit in Knoxville. Uh, and... I think, you know, we did a series of these that were TV commercials. And then we also, uh, going back to what I said a moment ago, we, we repurposed them for this company or this for this nonprofit so that they were able to utilize them as TV commercials in a 30 second format. And then we also had, you know, produced longer formats that were upward of 60 seconds that they were able to use on their social media and, you know, or in scenarios where they wanted to go deeper uh, with the content, uh, but still very short, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, um, but that's a great way to, you know, use the power of video, combining sound, combining text on screen with some visuals to really make a strong message. Um, announcement videos are another uh, big form of video that's utilized a lot. We shoot those pretty routinely for companies when they're wanting to make an announcement and they want to get the word out about something. Those are great to you know, share, th share a link through an email um, so that you're taking people away. Statistics really tell us that folks are far more eager to open, click open on an email when something in the subject line alludes to a video. So video is a great way to get your emails read if you can uh, make mention of the video in your, in your subject of your email and then actually, you know, have a link uh, early in your email that will uh, entice the viewer to, uh, continue uh, wanting that, you know, people want to see what is this video? What are they trying to say here? Um, when it comes to producing video on your own, or, you know, when it comes to, you know, trying to put myself in the, in the seat of a small business owner or of a nonprofit uh, director, that kind of thing, I was trying to think how would I coach you into making the most of video in general when you're starting at square one, maybe you've never done anything with video before and you're just trying to think like, okay, if video is this important, if video is this effective, how can I start making use of it? And the first thing I'll say is just start, you know, and that's, that's the advice that I have for myself too. When, you know, um, recently I realized that I needed to be sharing more video about my business and that's where we produced the, the video that I shared with you earlier, but sometimes it's literally just making the commitment to start somewhere, you know, and it doesn't have to be a highly produced video. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, it, the sky's truly the limit. You could do, I would encourage you to think creatively about how you start, but just start. That's the most important thing. And I think once you start, once you start to put a little content out, you'll start to learn from that. You'll start to see what works better than than others. I would say start, you know, with small chunks of video and try to come up with something engaging that can further your goals and objectives, which is point two there. You want to think through, okay, what's the most important thing to my business or organization right now? And then start from there, you know, think about what kind of 10 second video would help further that mission that you have. And, um, you know, you could just start to just put the content out there. And I think you'll see that video does gain traction and, um, you know, you're going to want to share that in a variety of portals. If you're sharing on social media, you want to make sure you, you have that video on Instagram and, or maybe you want to treat each portal slightly different. Maybe you want to adapt the video that you share on LinkedIn a little bit from what you put on Instagram, just because, you know, traditionally speaking, LinkedIn is considered more of a formal uh, business friendly environment, whereas uh, Instagram is traditionally known to be a little, a place where you can maybe have a little bit more fun or get a little bit more creative. That's no slam towards LinkedIn. I like LinkedIn, LinkedIn a lot, but, you know, I think it's important to know the audience that you're going to have in each portal and also know what um, may work best in each portal. So you may want to, you know, re, um, you may want to reformat your video slightly different for some portals than others. And I'll, I'll touch on that just a little bit uh, later in the talk, but mix it up. We kind of already touched on that, but I think you want to, I think you want to avoid getting stuck in producing the same kind of video content. And, um, you know, there, there's some times when I think we as humans like, like tradition, we like to um, know what, what kind of content we're ingesting. If we're, if we're, if we like a podcaster, we kind of like the format that that podcaster um, presents their content in, but I think it's always fun to mix it up. And, you know, I think that's just me as a video producer. I like to say, I never want to produce the same video twice. You know, like I want each 
piece of content that I produce to be slightly different. And mm -hmm. to me, that, you know, is the most fun and the most engaging. Um, you want to build a library and uh, Sandy and her team uh, with these new knowledge sessions have done a great job of that. You can go to YouTube and find, you know, they're very consistent with the content that they produce. If you want to find it, you know where to go, you know, to go to YouTube, you have access to all of it. And that's powerful. I think when you can start to build a library and you can start to point people, you know, Hey, you want to learn more about our nonprofit? You want to learn more about our business? Here's a link to our YouTube, you know, have at it. You've got 10 videos, let's say on there, or even three, you know, it was a good starting place where, you know, people can get a feel for who you are and what you're about um, in a library of videos. Cause a lot of times if people do start, if they make it to your YouTube channel, or if you send them a link to a video that you've created and they watch that, you know, they're going to end up seeing a lot of times the content that uh, is in your account. So they're going to naturally you know, they're already sitting there ready to watch a video. So a lot of times they'll end up watching several. So it's a good, good idea to build a library and, um, you know, keep content fresh so that they uh, want to come back looking for more. Okay, Carrie, I've got another question. Okay. Curry Stiegel wants to know, I would be interested to hear your opinion of some estimates of turnaround time when producing different lengths of video. For example, three minute company uh, overview versus a 10 second social media engagement piece from planning to filming to producing and delivering the final product. I understand each uh, video is unique, but just a general idea would be helpful. Okay, sure. Uh, you know, general idea and it kind of, you know, I don't, I can only speak for myself and my company and what our timelines are usually others may be faster or slower. You know, I think that's, that's quite, that could be a big variable, but for us, you know, um, even at our busiest times, we're typically, you know, looking at six to eight weeks, you know, for like, well, the company overview video that we did for Lab Connect last year actually took several months. And part of the reason for that was that we literally had to fly, even in the midst of a pandemic, we were traveling um, to, to capture that content um, for that video. And so, you know, that one took some time just because of 2020 and the logistics of everything involved with that. So that particular project took us several months. I want to say about four to six months. Most of the videos that we produce, we flip in two to three weeks. Um, you know, a social video could be a lot quicker to produce than a longer form video, but a lot of times it just, you know, usually our, um, our edit turnaround is a couple of weeks from finalizing a shoot. So if it takes us, you know, two months to shoot all the content, which is rare, um, you know, we can usually deliver the product within a couple of weeks after finalizing all the shoot material. A lot of times we will literally, um, we just produce some content for a local, um, pretty large corporation in the area recently. And they called us and, you know, had very little time to get 12, fairly substantial videos done and by the grace of God <laughs> and you know I'm blessed to have a great team of folks that I've worked with for a long time and we we have a, a good process I feel like down but we were able to shoot 12 two to three minute videos a lot of these were talking head type interview based videos um, and we shot them within about a week and we had them you know edited that very same week because we had people out shooting while other people were out editing so you know uh, some videos we can you know flip pretty fast. We do sometimes charge a rush fee if it's, if there's an immediate need and, you know, because we have to mitigate um, our other deadlines and kind of work through, through, you know, keeping everybody happy. And sometimes that requires some overtime on our end, but, you know, I think uh, that's for speaking for me personally in my company, but I think, uh, I think those turnaround times are probably pretty accurate for most, uh, you know, video production companies. I would think a couple of weeks is, um, uh, is a good turnaround time for, let's say a two to three minute video, um, maybe two months actually from start of development, you know, especially if you're working with the company on the script and logistics of scheduling everybody and then getting the video edited, but, um, things can definitely move faster or slower depending on the variables. <laughs> I hope that's helpful. Any other questions at this point in time, or did that answer your question or uh, prompt any other questions? That's all we've got right now. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So uh, that really good segue. Uh, your questions are just very uh, timely because that is a great segue into my next segment, which is in-house or not. Um, 
you know, do you want to produce a video in-house or is it better to outsource? And, you know, I think in this day and age, it's great to produce content in-house. I think that, you know, video is so important and so critical that it's really important that you can have that capability to produce video in-house. Um, I also think there are definitely many times when you're better off uh, just to hire it out. And, you know, obviously I sell videos for a living, but I would say that for a multitude of reasons. I say it because I've talked to a lot of people that tried to produce video on their own and spent a lot of money on uh, equipment that was just frustrating to them in the end. They found that they didn't really have, you know, the aptitude in house to not that, you know, I think video is a skill that anybody can learn, but it does take time. You know, it takes time to learn editing software. It takes time to learn how to operate a camera and those technologies are ever evolving and ever changing. So, you know, I think um, it's a great idea to have somebody on staff that, uh, that is comfortable working with video and that can shoot and edit, you know, a simple video. And, and sometimes editing is literally just cutting off the, you know, the bloopers at the front end and, you know, making a clean cut at the end of a statement even, you know, and maybe putting a little music underneath that or something like that kind of video is very doable in house. And um, I think, you know, small businesses, large businesses, um, nonprofits would all do well to have folks in house that can handle that. And um, I was actually listening to a small business talk on this very portal um, yesterday and it was brought up how, you know, as a small business owner myself, I know we have to wear a lot of hats, you know, like I'm not the best bookkeeper in the world, but I have to, I've had to learn QuickBooks. So I think, you know, video is a kind of thing that you want to be familiar with. Um, but you also want to think through when it makes sense to just hire it out. And sometimes, you know, I think people have in their head that video production is super expensive and it can be, you know, tr truly at times it can be, uh, depending on what's involved with the video production. But it's also a lot of times a lot more achievable and a lot more budget friendly than people think. Um, and sometimes it really makes sense when it comes to time and money to just say, you know, Hey, uh, can you produce 10 short social media videos for me that will get me through the next three months, you know, and give me some video content without, you know, me having to worry about it. So, um, yeah, I think at times it's, I think it's good to think through the resources that you have, you know, do you already have the resources that you need? Do you have somebody that's familiar and ready to do some video for you or, you know, in the long run, is it just going to be easier to, to, to outsource that? Um, so moving right along video tips and I realize I'm actually getting behind here. I uh, have been a bit long winded. Uh, so I'm going to kind of breeze through some of this stuff, but um, I get a lot of questions or I used to get a lot of questions really about the use of a tripod. And I think um, tripods can be very helpful, especially if you're recording something that's static um, but you, uh, you know, there's times when a tripod can really slow you down and you just want to, you know, move quickly and be able to capture a lot of varied video. Um, so I coach people to use a tripod when it makes sense, but don't be afraid to, you know, go handheld. And a lot of cameras these days have some form of stabilization in, in them. And so, um, that is helpful. It's not going to fix, you know, jarring movements, but it does help to just steady the hand a bit. Um, you always want to get several takes of everything, you know, like I always, uh, when I'm recording, uh, and you know, with an interview, even if I pose a question, I'm recording an answer. A lot of times I will, um, you know, have them rephrase that answer slightly in a slightly different way, uh, after the first question, just so I have a good amount of material to edit from. And, um, you know, I think it's always helpful. You never want to have it's never a problem to have too much content, but it's often a problem to have too little content. So it doesn't hurt to just say, Hey, let's, uh, let's shoot that same question one more time. Um, you want to be aware of lighting and shadows. And I've got a, um, a little example here. This isn't the most dramatic example, but I'm sure you've all seen the difference uh, in today's society between um, even a zoom call where you have some light on the face and you're getting a very even appearance from someone as opposed to uneven light. And uh, this guy uh, in this picture, I think I pulled this from his blog. He's actually a video professional in uh, with Phil that I, that I know. And uh, I borrowed this from him. Great guy, Jay Noser. Um, but he's here showing um, the difference between 
better light, which is an even light to the right side of the face and uneven to the left. So, you know, like I said, I've seen more uneven light than this, but this shows you the difference between having a nice soft uh, light uh, that's pleasing to the face uh, there with an even light. And you can achieve this. I was at TJ Maxx the other day and I was amazed because they had a whole wall of video lights. And uh, that's just speaks of the day and time we're living in. You can buy these little LED lights. I'm sure you've all heard or seen of the ring lights and uh, they really can make a world of difference uh, when you're doing a Zoom call or if you're you know, recording a short video for your business organization. All right, I'm gonna really speed up here uh, to get through some of the rest of this. Another lighting example that I see a lot of people um, have a little trickiness with is shooting in front of windows. And that can really be problematic, especially um, on a lower end, you know, budget friendly camera, that camera is gonna expose to, you know, if it's set in an auto setting, it's gonna expose for the brightest light source. And so almost always, if you're in front of a window, the outdoor light is gonna be brighter than the indoor light. So you're always gonna end up with a backlit image as you see in this case where, you know, the camera is auto exposing for the outside and the outside looks nice, but then the person ends up looking really dark. So a ring light, you know, in some cases you could uh, turn a ring light on and it would help. But honestly, uh, the, the light power that the sun has really pales, um, you know, a ring light pales in comparison to the, to the magnitude of light that the sun puts out. So in a lot of cases, you can even turn an LED light on and you still are going to have a backlit issue. It's just, you know, unless it's a real overcast day and maybe you've got a shade that's bit translucent, you know, a lot of times you just want to avoid shooting in front of windows. And, you know, I have clients, I have one client in particular that part of their brand, um, part of their branding guidelines are to show natural light and they want, they want that feeling of natural light. So we ended up bringing in a lot of high powered lights and, you know, high end cameras to try to compensate for, you know, finding that happy medium between indoor and outdoor light, but it's not the easiest thing to do, you know, on your own. So I would say watch out for windows and uh, try to avoid those kind of backlit scenarios. Another thing when you're shooting interviews or talking heads, as I would say, you want to make sure that you frame up the person. Don't leave too much headroom because, um, you know, it just looks better when you, when you can see somebody, um, in a nicely framed shot. And I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Early and Dr. Keller, my old, uh, video teachers who taught me early on that uh, framing in thirds is a really good idea. And this is a principle that has long been used in, in video, but um, you can see here that the image is broken up into thirds. And what I try to do when I'm framing video is to do kind of like they've done in this particular shot. And you see that the level of the eyes is kind of just in that, uh, in that breaking point between the first top, top third and the middle third. So, uh, there's a thing called the Z principle, which I've talked about a little bit in other talks that I've done, but the Z principle says that the human eye starts in the top left corner, moves across the screen, moves down in the Z shape, and then moves down across the bottom. So that's kind of the way that our eyes and our brains take in information. So you kind of want to capture the attention of the viewer by leaving that um, middle part of the screen is really where they're going to you know, fix the most of their attention. It's going to kind of be the, the anchor between the top and the bottom. So as you can see here in this example, you've got a, a, a shot that's broken down into thirds in the eye line where you want to make eye contact with this guy is right in that, uh, in that segue between the top and the middle third. So there's just a little, little uh, geek speak on the video end for you all as you start thinking through framing shots. And that applies to, you know, uh, an interview shot as well as B-roll. Um, B-roll, which I mentioned before, is just footage that you may want to incorporate into a video. And this, uh, this slide here kind of shows you um, where I like to start with B-roll. I like to make sure that I get wide footage, medium footage, and tight footage. And that way, when you have a blend of perspectives, you can edit a video that's very visually engaging because it's got what I call visual variety. And you're, you're not just showing, you know, because that's kind of what our eyes and our brains do when we're when we walk into a room, we were looking at the room from a wide angle perspective, usually, you know, we're kind of taking in, we're using our peripheral vision and we're taking in the room. But then maybe when someone starts to talk or when our interest is uh, in one particular object, we kind of, we have a way of zooming in with our eyes and focusing in on, you know, an object. And so when you're producing video, you kind of want to take the viewer through that similar experience. You want to show them, you know, the wide angle, you want to mix it up with some tighter perspectives and that kind of thing. So 
Uh, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to keep, keep breezing through here. Uh, video editing, um, real quick, just know what you're getting into. I think I touched on that a, a little bit before, but you know, do a little research or talk, you know, give me a call. I'm happy. I do free consultations all the time to give, you know, people an idea of just what my vantage point would be, or if I would recommend, uh, you know, setting up a studio in house or, you know, uh, buying an editing system or that kind of thing. I'm happy to answer those kinds of questions. If you have them, if I don't have the question, I'll be glad to point you to somebody that may, or maybe some online resources, but I just want to say, you know, definitely do your research. If that's something you're thinking about buying a camera, buying an editing system, just don't go buy the thing and then try to figure it out afterwards. Do a little research on the front end so that you don't end up regretting that purchase. Um, Flashy transitions are pretty much a no-go in most cases. You know, back in the 80s, it was all about, you know, those kinds of transitions. And these days and times, there's always an exception to every rule, but flat cuts are, are typically, you want people to focus on the content and not necessarily a transition. Background music should match the tone of your video. There's plenty of copy, copyright free music out there. You can search, you know, find lots of sites where you can buy cheap music or you can find uh, free copyright free music. You do want to use copyright free music in your videos because YouTube and Facebook will literally yank your videos uh, if you use video that, or use audio rather that's copyrighted. Um, moving right along with video equipment, I always like to say buy from a reputable dealer, uh, BH. BNHphotovideo.com uh, is my go-to source. I bought equipment for them for years and years. They have a superstore up in New York City, but they um, they excellent customer support. Um, they're going to have pretty much everything that Amazon or anybody else is going to have, but they really stand by their products. They'll even you know talk you through how to use them uh, or troubleshoot that kind of thing. So I really recommend BNH. Um, Phones can work. And I left this, this was from an old slide from a talk I did years ago, but some of you may have heard that talk and I uh, kind of focused on just say no to vertical video and actually showed a video years ago about um, why not to use vertical video. Um, but I'm going to retract that statement today and say, that's not always the case. And this, you know, there are certainly times where you want to hold a camera, especially if you're shooting with a phone, which phones, uh, phones have limitations. You know, a lot of times that's battery life storage, uh, the ease of use of getting files off of a phone into an editor. Those are the limitations of a phone. But when it comes to using a phone, uh, you can get great quality in this day and age out of a phone. And Tom, there's actually times when I'll pull out my iPhone 11 and actually get a few shots that I edit into high end videos because the quality is that good. Um, and in those times, I'm always going to hold my phone uh, horizontally so that I can get that widescreen video because that's in most cases what I want for the videos that I work on. But there are times in this day and age where vertical video does make sense. And, you know, we have a lot of social media content that's viewed on phones today. And if you're if you're doing an Instagram story or, you know, even Facebook content, there are times when you want to go vertical. So I retract on the on the statement of a very strong statement that I made years ago when I said just say no to vertical video. Um, I'm going to breeze through just a couple more slides. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities to learn. We all know that YouTube has a ton of content. You can subscribe to sites like lynda.com. You can learn a lot about video that way. Um, kind of going back to the gear side of things, you do want to make sure that the computer that you're wanting to utilize to edit video can handle it, especially 4K video can really bog down computers. And so you want to make sure, you know, if you are purchasing a computer to use for editing, that it's got the right specs for uh, memory, which is RAM, hard drive space. Um, you want to have headphones uh, so that you can clearly hear audio. Um, audio is another big thing that I think I skipped over from another slide, but audio is half of video. You know, you always want to remember that the power of video comes from both sight and sound and uh, audio makes up half of the experience. So I see a lot of people that will focus on, you know, buying a fancy camera, but then they don't have any audio gear and, you know, audio can be tr become troublesome. Um, some days I'll just throw this out there. There are times when you don't want a video to have audio. Uh, I know Facebook, a lot of times Facebook avatar advertisers uh, will just produce videos with captions, which we do quite often for clients who just want a silent video or a video that can play at a trade show with no audio. So that is a thing um, at times, but um, just something else to think about when it comes to video. All right. So I'm really wrapping up here. Um, you know, part of uh, creating a video is actually the production process of creating a video, but then you also think about the rollout and, and there's a lot to think about once you have created a video, you always want to put a good name description, use keywords and tags. If you're 
putting content on YouTube. Uh, you want to pay attention to the video thumbnail. I see this all the time. Uh, people will have a great video and they'll put it up on their YouTube channel or wherever else, but they don't pay any attention to changing the image that is seen when you first go to their YouTube channel. So I will say that it's always most inviting to me to watch a video when the thumbnail that you see is really engaging or really speaks to what the video content is. So that's a great um, thing to think about when you're, when you're about to release a video um, is to think through, you know, video thumbnail, sizing, audio and captions. I realize now that I've put too much content. It's funny. I, I ran through this presentation before uh, beforehand and I was really fast, but today uh, I've, I've gotten chatty on this, uh, on this live call, but um, I apologize for that having to speed through so much of this, but um, sizing audio and captions, those are all things to think about. And also the time of day that you release a video, if you are, or the day and time, you know, you may want to, even if you're a small business, you may want to release a video on a Saturday morning or mid afternoon on a Sunday when more eyes are going to be on your video on social media and that kind of thing. So anyway, I'm just going to slip on through, um, keep in touch. I know I've really, really had to speed through some of this here at the end. So feel free to reach out to me directly. I've got my email address here on screen. I'm always happy to answer questions and we'll truly try to point you in the right direction. If you have questions pertaining to video, um, you can visit my website. There's actually a contact contact us box that kind of answers or, or poses a few questions that can kind of lead you down a path if you're trying to think through, you know, do you want to produce a video and that kind of thing, um, working with a production company. But I'm going to stop because I've already gone over time. And uh, I know you've already had the opportunity to submit questions throughout the talk. But if anybody has any that they want to share right now, I'm happy to uh, happy to try to answer this. Carrie, I don't I don't see any. Uh, but Folks, you've got a you've got a second. If you've got a question for um, Carrie, please put it in the Q and A. I do have a question, and you touched on it briefly. For those on a limited budget, whether it be a small business, either even a startup business, to um, uh, nonprofits who you know are always scrambling for money, what equipment or, and software would you suggest? For example, you know a lot of people are. are um, have their smartphones that they are carrying around with them, depending on the type of phone um, and the, you know, how recent it is and the camera, you know, could they use that um, to do the filming, but, and you touched on that they might need a tripod or they could use a selfie stick, but, mm -hmm. you know, you kept reiterating about a mic, you know, using an external mic, because we know on the phones when you're, you're filming it, the, your microphone's kind of on the opposite side of where the camera's going to be. Uh, so any quick tips, even from editing software like PowerDirector or iMovie that you can share with us? Sure. It's a great question, Sandy, and it's always one that I get. It's also one that I don't feel super equipped to answer very well, just because, you know, the, the equipment that we use and the software that we use is so different from a lot of the consumer based software. So I feel like I'm a little bit out in left field on this question, but I will say that um, if anybody has any specific questions like that, or if they're wondering, you know, like I don't have a lot of experience with um, really any of those consumer software. I, I used iMovie years ago, but I'm all Mac based and my whole team is, is all Mac based. So we use Adobe Premiere. We actually uh, we use DaVinci Resolve, which is a great free um, editor and it's super powerful, um, but it is also, you know, has quite a learning curve on it. So, you know, it's not, it's definitely something that there's tons of tutorials out there that you could uh, download a free version of DaVinci Resolve and you can do a lot with it. Um, so that's definitely an area that I do point, a road that I point people down because that's very robust editing software that will serve you well. Um, but as far as like other consumer based softwares, I know that, you know, Adobe does have some apps that you can use on the phone. They've got a editing program called rush that Adobe rush that you can uh, buy pretty affordably, I think. And it's just an app that you could use on your iPad. I don't unfortunately have any experience with it. So I can't coach people far beyond that, but um, you know, I'd be happy to entertain questions as far as, you know, if you want to email me questions or I could, um, even find some links to good articles online that would help in that regard. I think, I, and I have an app called Adobe Spark too, that allow you to do some editing of and add music and text to it and um, things. And there's apps that allow you to 
maybe you want to crop in on that video that you can crop it and, and piece it together. Um, and, you know, one of the questions that just popped up is what is the best platform to use when you're just starting your business? I mean, so I guess that would be editing platform or that kind of thing. Um, or when you're trying to push it out, is it Facebook right. and, and YouTube and yeah. I tend to think, I mean, my starting place, my biggest recommendation would be starting with Facebook. Um, I think Facebook is probably still the kind of the central hub that, um, that the majority of folks use. I think you really want to know your target audience too, and you want to know where they're hanging out um, or, you know, what portals they may be using. But, um, you know, all of the social media platforms are really lend themselves to video, even Twitter. I mean, we don't think about Twitter being a video so, you know, video source, but, you know, it's easy to link a video in Twitter. And I think, you know, t videos that are linked on Twitter get a lot of engagement. So I think really it's just about where your audience is. Well, that kind of comes up to the next question. Alan necessarily want to know what other, other than YouTube and Facebook, what are some of the other up and coming sites that businesses can target to gain consumer attention? I know TikTok, even though I used to think it was all for teenagers, right. seems to really be getting a lot of legs um and activity yeah tiktok is huge when it comes to video and um i have I, i'm not super up on you know how businesses are using tiktok or if they're using tiktok a lot i mean i know big national brands are um when it comes to small business i mean i don't see why you couldn't utilize tiktok particularly if your audience that you're trying to reach is there and it never hurts to just dip your toes in and uh and to go from a toe tipper to a cannonballer as the Airbnb video shared. But um, Snapchat, I was reading an interesting article the other day that said that, you know, most people associate Snapchat with the younger generation or, you know, with Gen Z millennials, that kind of thing. Um, but stats actually show that there are plenty of 40 somethings on Snapchat. So, uh, you know, I, I have to just say, I think it goes back to your audience, but I think it never hurts. And the nice thing is, you know, there are, uh, pieces of software. And unfortunately, I'm not super up on what they are, but I know there's software out there that probably you all are a lot more familiar with than I am that allow you to, to post on multiple sites simultaneously. So you might create one piece of content and you definitely want to, why not put it up on as many spots as you can, as many locations as you can. And then you start to see where your traction is, you know? Yeah. I, I used to use Hootsuite a lot and post one thing there. Yeah. You know, and it would go to some of my other social platforms. Um, and I know we're running short on time. Um, I do want to remind folks that this is being recorded. And if you miss something or you want to just double check, uh, please go to the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page. That'll be posted there as well as the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash new knowledge. It's very hard to, to remember. But um, uh, I want to thank you. Um, Carrie, we couldn't do this program if it wasn't for entrepreneurs, folks like yourself that specialize in different topics that share your time and your knowledge with us to do this. And um, I want to let folks that are with us, you know, we're getting, we're planning our next um, uh, group of sessions that will start probably in uh, September of new knowledges that will go through June of next year. If there's a topic um, that you want us to um, try to find someone to, to lead, please let us know as soon as possible. Um, you know, we had um, close to 27 on here, which has been great. That's a, probably the most carry that we've had in a while for oh. since COVID has kind of slowed down and people are not sitting in their offices and their, you know, home offices and, and working. So, um, I think video is still important. And, you know, one of the things as you were talking, it would be great if we could subdivide your pair, your presentation and, and turn it into like a series of, you know, here's different um, platforms that you can do editing and, and how, how to post it and how to uh, uh, make sure that people are, uh, you're getting hit and all that. So I can see that there's lots of ways that we can just take this one topic and turn it into where it's really beneficial to everybody, although today was fantastic. But if you've got a suggestion, please let us know. Um, you can send it, you, you would have got an email from me um, today as a reminder for this session through Zoom. So 
uh, respond, let me know. But um, we're doing this for you to support our business community, not only in Washington County, but throughout Virginia. That's one of the things that Virginia Community Capital we're looking at is how can we can take this wonderful uh, platform and uh, program that we have and we're, we're pushing it out to other parts of Virginia to um, be able to see and take advantage of this valuable content. So uh, thanks again. Uh, we This is our last session, as I said earlier, and uh, we want to hear from you what you want next. And we'll take the summer off, but um, they're all archived. If you need any help, let us know. But thanks again. And Carrie, you're, you're the tops in my book. Uh, thank you, Sandy. You are. And I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you all today. And thank you for your grace and helping me uh, ease out from behind the camera and into the in front of the camera world. And sorry, I had to speed talk so much. That's that's fine. That's but but you had valuable content and everybody benefited from it. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Enjoy your summer. And again, we want to hear from you. And um, I will be sending you a link to where when I put this up on YouTube and Carrie's going to share me uh, share with me her slides and I will get that to you. Uh, thanks to my partners, the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator and the town of Abington. This has been a great partnership and we are putting some valuable content out there. So thanks everybody. Enjoy your day. I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you all. Thank thanks. you. Bye-bye.